Welcome to the Northeast Division Contest. Future winner of the District Contest. <laughs> today. Thank you for coming. It's a nice turnout. We got some great competitions. I had a chance to go to the area contest and some wonderful people competing in our division. I'll leave you with this thought. When it comes time for performing, Bob Fosse, one of the premier choreographers and dancers, used to say, no matter what happened to you the day before, what's happening to that day, you get ready to go, and it's showtime. <laughs> I'd like to introduce our Toastmaster for today, Tiffany Selenko Howard.
Contestants, timers, ballot counters, and sergeant at arms have all been briefed prior to the beginning of this contest. Everyone is aware of the Toastmasters international rules that govern this contest. No one should enter or leave the room during the contestants presentations. You may do so if time permits during the one minute of silence in between while ballots are being conducted. Thank you. And with that said, let the contest begin. Right now I would like to give you the speaking order. Hopefully everybody has an agenda and program for today's contest. If you do not, they are in the back of the room. Evaluation contestant number one, Robert Kleiner. Evaluation contestant number one, Robert Kleiner. Evaluation contestant number two, Jeff Stein. Contestant number two, Jeff Stein. Contestant number three, Ron Eichholzer. Contestant number three, Ron Eichholzer. Contestant number four, James Domenola. Contestant number four, James Domenola. Contestant number five, Tim Wilson. Evaluation contestant number five, Tim Wilson. And our final contestant number six, Mark LeBron. Evaluation contestant number six, <laughs> Mark LeBron. In order for our evaluation contestants to compete, we will need a target speaker. Please help me in welcoming to the lectern Thomas Braun. Not any given Sunday. Not any given Sunday, Thomas Braun. college that was the meal that extended us through the week <laughs> but with this time of year the best part about Sunday is football season <laughs> we're in week three right now you would say it's early on in the season game three but there's only 16 games but this is not any given Sunday today the Detroit Lions for the first time ever are hosting Sunday night football in Detroit and I say that because Detroit's been notoriously horrible that they have never been able to achieve the main stage of Sunday Night Football. But this is not any given Sunday. Uh, at 1.10 a.m. British Standard Time a supermoon solar eclipse will occur. <laughs> and this is, this is necessary because the Detroit Lions are 0-2 right now, playing against the, the Denver Broncos, who are two wins. They are one of nine teams undefeated in the NFL. But at 1.10 a.m. British Standard Central Time, or British Standard Time, the, the moon will be in a perigee with Earth, which is the closest point it comes to Earth in its, in its orbit. And at that same moment, there's going to be a solar eclipse. And so the moon is going to be bright, and it's going to be red. It's about, it'll appear 14 times larger, 14% larger in the night sky, and it'll be 30% brighter than when it's at its, what they call the apogee which is the farthest distance the moon is from the Earth in its orbit. So with that, I'm saying there's some hope for the lions. <laughs> it's, it's a game of inches. <laughs> so my boy Calvin Johnson, I'm hoping that that gravitational pull from the moon give him maybe an extra six inches to a foot on his vertical, bring in a couple extra catches so we can get the win. Um, but this is, you know, 
not any given Sunday because this is my first uh, division contest that I've ever met with that Toastmasters. <laughs> so I'm very appreciative that I've had this opportunity and I've enjoyed my time at Toastmasters. I've been a part of this organization for well, since May. <laughs> so I've really enjoyed the people I've met, and I'm happy to be here because it's comfortable. I can come up here, talk to you, and meet great people, socialize. So that is just another point that this makes today just not any given Sunday. So I would like to thank you, all of you for your time, and, and uh, that's it. <laughs> we will now give our speech evaluation contestants five minutes to complete their evaluations. Mr. Sergeant at Arms, will you please escort the contestants out of the room for five minutes and then start bringing them back in with the first um, contestant? I will ask our timers now. Begin five minutes on the clock and please signal me with the green card at the end of five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and 
What inspires you most is music. Any particular genre or? No, just anything, I guess. I realized recently, because I haven't been listening to as much music lately, that some, like I go throughout the day just kind of feeling like there's no direction or there's nothing. So just music, if there's a good song and it fits your day, that gets you through it, that gets you motivated to do something that you might not want to, like in the house. <laughs> so I have to ask, you did come into here today with your Lions jersey on, so I'm pretty sure a room full of Bears fans, were you a little worried? Uh, <laughs> with the season they're having, though. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you, it pains me to be a Bears fan this year, but we'll see what the Lions do yeah. as well. So I tried to keep the speech short because I know they got kicked off the up. <laughs> <laughs> so we'd like to thank you for being our guest today. We have a certificate for you <coughs> as well as a Toastmasters. Oh, thank you. and guests and of course Thomas. On any given Sunday, you can find me either looking at Facebook or trying to get an Indianapolis Colts score. Yeah. Or you'll be looking for my fantasy football team. Which by the way, I'm with you, Calvin Johnson is on my team. <laughs> so I am 100% with you that we need to make sure that the Lions don't make their first time their last time. So what I'm going to do today, Thomas, is talk a little bit about what you did really well with this speech. And then from there, we're going to work on how you can make the speech even better and make it a true speech of first and not your last. So Thomas, one of the things I loved is that you came with an outfit, a costume. Right off the bat, you made everybody a little bit more relaxed. Oh, we know what he's going to talk about. He's going to talk about football. And for me, woohoo, Calvin Johnson, go. <laughs> so without question, that helped. What really helped is I loved how you made it a speech of firsts. You talked about three different types of firsts. The Lions, the Supermoon thing, and then how this is the first time you're at a con on a contest. And those three things were the pieces that you tied together. And what helped that was the humor. You made people laugh. You were only on here for three minutes and 40 seconds, but in that time there were at least seven major laughs. The biggest one was during the Supermoon. The other one was about the Lions and hoping about the Supermoon. So those were great moments for you. And I feel like you did a great job with it. And it gave you a lot to work with and really made you have this audience in the palm of their hand. Now where you need to work is that once you got past those firsts, there wasn't much behind it. There wasn't a real mission or a call to action or telling me what I needed to do or why I should care other than the fact that I have Calvin Johnson. I don't think the rest of the audience does. <laughs> so that, to me, was an area that you needed to work on. And as a result of that, you had a situation where I think you got a little nervous up here because you ran out of material or you weren't sure exactly what you wanted to say. And that resulted in a couple of these and a few pacings back and forth and a little bit of the stumbles. Those things can be dealt with with figuring out the structure and really working on that content. You have a really great speech about firsts, and you can build on that. And I think it would be a great thing for you to keep going with this speech and work on it and really build this out to talking about why these firsts are important to you and maybe to other people's firsts and how they can work on their firsts to make sure that they're not their last. You have some great humor. 
you had some great beginning building blocks. I loved your costume. You needed a little bit more of a mission statement, and you needed to work a little bit more on structure, and you needed to relax a little bit. Overall, this was a great speech. I don't know if the Colts were winning today. I know this. I'm hoping Calvin Johnson gets me points because I'm a high in fantasy football. That I'm totally <laughs> Thank you, Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests, and of course, Tom. Nicely done. I'm going to talk to you today about two things. Some of the things you did beautifully today, and some opportunities for tomorrow. <coughs> Let's start with what you did beautifully today. I thought there were three things that you did very, very well. One is you came up here with great warmth and charm. You've got this wonderful rolling baritone voice that filled the room and made everyone feel very comfortable. It was very charming and you seemed very genuine. The second thing that you did was you were very creative and very humorous in your speech today. You ironically paired the apogee of the moon with the Detroit Lions. That was great. It was lovely how you turned that corner and everyone laughed at that. Nicely done. Number three, I'd like to just acknowledge that it was very courageous for you to come up here. You started in Toastmasters in May, and here you are speaking at this level. That is <coughs> terrific. And I think it shows each of us what a little bit of courage will do. It will get you up here. Well, those are three things that you did beautifully today. Let's take a look at two opportunities to take this to the next level tomorrow. Because we're all Toastmasters and we're looking to improve. First of all, I'd like to invite you to take a look at your opening. You were very warm and you were very gracious. There was something really nice about that image that you created at home. And it was a story you were telling. I wonder if you could enlist us in the audience just a little bit more. For example, you could say something like, have you ever wondered how the Detroit Lions are just like the apogee of the moon? And everybody would have been saying, wow, what's that? And really sort of wondering. And that could have been really cool. And then, of course, you would have answered it. And that would have built up a little bit of anticipation, and then you would have delivered an answer, and you would have felt, ah, the sense of satisfaction. That's number one opportunity. The second is in your closing. I thought it was nice the way you thanked the audience and you were very gracious. It could have, you could have brought it home if you had maybe gone back to that image of home and said, today is going to be like a feast for the fans. Just as we had a feast at home when I was back, and I can't remember now, was it Oklahoma? No, no, of course not. Detroit. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I met somebody today from Oklahoma. Nicely done. Take the things that you did beautifully today, pair them with the opportunities for tomorrow, and next time it's showtime, you'll do wonderful things. <laughs>
evaluation contestant number four. Evaluation contestant number four, James Dominello. Good afternoon, Toastmasters, fellow Toastmasters, distinguished dignitaries, friends, and guests. Especially, Thomas. Your presentation this afternoon on the Detroit Lions. Boy, that was something I didn't think I'd hear on this football Sunday. <laughs> Everyone here is talking about the Bears, and a little bit bad about the Packers as well. But the Detroit conversation didn't expect to enter the picture. In addition, I didn't expect the quick little science lesson that you gave us there. I did not know that this Sunday, unlike the rest of the Sundays we have, we have a solar eclipse. That is very cool. That is something I didn't know before I came in the room today. I appreciate you sharing that new information, sharing those facts. It helps us all grow. We can all learn more. We can all build on it. And we have something to talk about when we get home. We don't have to talk about bears and packers. We can talk about Detroit and solar eclipses. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that with us. In addition, there's a couple points that I'd like to provide you in what I like to call a section, Feed Forward. Feedback is really, really great, but feedback is looking at the past. Let's take a moment here and look at the future, what you can do to add a little bit more, pepper it into your speeches, enhance it, and make it that much better the next time you deliver it for us. The fact that this was one of your first contests and one of your first speeches, and you were willing to come up here and share with all of us, that was awesome. You did an excellent job. Going forward, this is a large room, high vaulted ceilings, so very nice aesthetically. But for speeches, can be a little tough. So one point I'd like to share is make sure you're projecting your voice, turning, <coughs> addressing different parts of the audience as you go through, so you can make sure everyone can hear you. Another thing that works is you can step forward, address a specific section of the audience, connect with them, and look at them. It's a lot harder for them not to pay attention to you then. <laughs> <laughs> All right? <laughs> So this being one of your first speeches, I'm glad you were able to hop up, share with us, and tell us all about the Detroit Lions and their game today. I'm hoping they win. I think that would be an awesome conclusion to this Sunday, making it not just any given Sunday, of course, but a special Detroit Sunday. So as part of Toastmasters, we like to make sure we perform and our teams perform. So let's hopefully practice all together. We can perform in Toastmasters. Our athletes can perform, and we can all be better all around. Thank you, Thomas. That's really great. And 
when you start out up there, start out with a little humor. Humor is wonderful. Because humor is something that is happy. Now, granted, we have a humor speech contest. But any time you start out with humor in your speech, it's going to make things better. Because once the audience starts laughing, everybody gets everything with it. Everybody's just kind of that comedy. Notice that when people start laughing, they just kind of all get happy, they all kind of get together. Yeah, you remember those comedy clubs about your drunks all kind of singing together and laughing and everything? Yeah, exactly. exactly. And repeat, repeat. Repeat to make your message rememberable. Repeating makes your message rememberable. <coughs> Repeating about that. Over and over, Tom repeated his message. So you got it. You understood it. It was right there. It was part of everything. As you went all the way through, you understood what that message was, and it sank into your brain. So how do you make this speech better? Well, there's one thing that's the bane of speakers everywhere, the terror of all speakers, and it's these things, right? Hands. Do you ever wish you just could cut your hand, arm off, like right about here, and have to deal with them? <laughs> now, some people, they put their hands here, and I wonder, what are they doing with them? <laughs> Other people put their hands here, and I don't want to know what they're doing with them. <laughs> now, you put your hands here pretty much all the way through the time. Instead, keep your hands holstered. Do you need them? So how are you really going to make things better? Well, one thing to do is to focus. Focus on the audience. It's all about the audience. That's something the speakers, maybe you forget. Maybe you think as a speaker, hey, it's all about me. I'm talking up here. Pay attention to me. And if you do that, that's fine. But it's not really going to make the audience happy. Audience first. First thing you do is you focus on the audience. First thing you do is you talk directly to the audience. Make it relevant to the audience. Make it interesting to the audience. And how do you do that? Glad you asked. Use the you. Use the you. If you do that simple thing, use the you, you'll discover instantly you'll connect deeper, stronger, faster. It's like people are right there on stage with you when you use the word you. It's a magical word. Use the you and make it happen. Well, interesting speech, Tom, and who knows? Maybe the moon can bring about the miracle and bring about it the Bears winning the Super Bowl this year. Yeah. <laughs> certainly agree about that. We have several contestants coming up here putting themselves forward and even the target speaker, Tom, stepping in front of a crowd, possibly the biggest he's ever done, and putting himself out here to help out the club. And then we have his team that he not only told us about, he brought the jersey for us to witness his passion for explaining to us why it's not any given Sunday. And that's one of the things I really liked about it. It was mysterious. What do you mean it's not any given Sunday? It feels like a real Sunday to me. And then he went on to explain to us why. So it was a very fascinating and unique, informative speech. Because he did something that I'm not sure any of us could do quite as well. Weaving together two seemingly completely separate things. The supermoon 
and his favorite football team, the Detroit Lions. And he managed to pull that connection together for us. And I think he did that really, really well. Not only did he present us information, but also outstanding vocabulary. I learned the word apogee. I haven't heard that since I messed with model rockets. Like <laughs> Fantastic job there. And the great central theme that held the speech together, that was awesome. The way you repeated, not any given Sunday, it made it easy for me to remember to bring up here for my evaluation. <laughs> we all walk away from it remembering it's not any given Sunday. That was fantastic. And my last favorite thing about your speech is the humor. It's one of your strongest traits and the timing. You've already got that down, which is tricky. That's not an easy thing to do when you're starting out speaking. Keep that up because it enhances your speeches. The one thing that I would use to enhance that is the pauses. You can use your hook, not any given Sunday, as a point to bring you back into the speech because you had a little, a little bit of a shuffle and then got right back on track and continued it in your body, but the transitions is something you can enhance. <coughs> and using your hook, your central theme, you'll just pause. Again, ladies and gentlemen, it's not any given Sunday, and then jump right into your body. You can also use that to avoid the um, ums and ahs using that hook. Another thing I would say is work on your vocal variety, but not too much. Because it was a little bit monotone, but then when you were using your vocal variety to deliver your punchline, it was perfect. So when we go on to develop the vocal variety, it's important not to lose the little facets that make us unique and enjoyable to watch. But other than that, this was an outstanding speech, and I really enjoyed listening to it. Thank you, Tom.
contest, Toastmaster, we have all the ballots. Thank you. 